Welcome to NTD China News. I'm Karen Chang. Today is Wednesday, December 12, 2012, and in the headlines, China responds after North Korea's rocket launch, loosening of censorship, Xi Jinping's name unblocked on Weibo, and what did China come in third for in media suppression? North Korea launched a rocket into orbit today and the move has worried the international community. China has joined in to criticize its communist ally, but will it back tougher actions that the UN Security Council may call for? After North Korea launched what it called a weather satellite into space today, China pronounced the move regrettable. It also hinted it would not support a harsh international response. As a member of the United Nations, North Korea has an obligation to respect the rules of the relevant UN Security Council resolution. China believes the Security Council's response should be cautious and moderate, protect the overall peaceful and stable situation on the Korean Peninsula and avoid an escalation of the situation. The Chinese regime is North Korea's biggest ally and trading partner and has acted as a mediator between North Korea and countries like the U.S., South Korea and Japan. Japan has called for a U.N. Security Council meeting to impose further sanctions on North Korea following the rocket launch. But analysts say the Chinese regime would likely push for negotiations instead. China will not support a policy of sanctions, because in the past, sanctions have not had any effect, and in the future, they won't have any effect either. Yan Shui-tong adds if China wants to maintain any influence over North Korea, it would want to avoid taking an adversarial approach. For Chinese citizens, reactions to the rocket launch were varied. Anyone can launch a rocket for peaceful use, right? Especially in the U.S., Western countries, they have no need to interfere with North Korea launching a satellite. This can be a relatively big military threat and a sign of insecurity for the region. So personally, I don't like that this has happened. We still feel a bit worried, because if political and economic conflicts arise between them, North and South Korea, and if the conflict deepens, this will directly or indirectly affect us. While North Korea claims it is peacefully developing its space technology, many believe this is the first step in developing long-range nuclear weapon technology. There have been discussions online over whether China's strict internet police are loosening their grip on social media. On Monday, Chinese leaders like Xi Jinping and Li Keqiang became searchable on Sina Weibo, China's version of Twitter. Netizens could also post critical messages about them. Are cracks appearing in China's Great Firewall? Analysts aren't so sure. Is the internet becoming freer in China? On Monday, users on China's Twitter like Sina Weibo were suddenly able to search the names of top leaders like Xi Jinping. Before this, netizens could only see messages like, according to related laws and regulations, search results are not shown. The apparent loosening of censorship on social media has generated some interest. Zhang Xunyu, an information freedom advocate, says the move reflects the new image that Xi Jinping wants to portray. Xi Jinping has three strategies, anti-corruption, economic reform, and being closer to the people. So on the last point, he wants to show, see, you can freely search my name. But not every leader has become unblocked on Sina. While searches for incoming Premier Li Keqiang and even disgraced official Bo Xilai yield results, a search for outgoing Premier Wen Jiabao is blocked. Terms like Falun Gong or Tiananmen Square protests also remain unsearchable. It shows that there are still no signs of any significant change. The new leader just wants to get a handle on things, so he can only make small gestures, like punishing corruption or changing the way things are done. But in terms of any major changes, I don't see it. Instead of signaling freer cyberspace, Xiang Xinyu thinks the latest development shows the opposite. This is actually an unfortunate development. It means China's internet is completely controlled by the government. It can unblock and block information in any way it wants. During the Communist Party's factional infighting this year, certain terms normally censored became temporarily unblocked. 
In May, NTD's report on the Chinese regime's persecution of the Falun Gong spiritual practice turned up in searches on Baidu, China's largest search engine. The Chinese regime closely controls what domestic media can report about. Those who don't toe the party line or decide to do their independent reporting can and do get in trouble. A U.S.-based media advocacy group has released new figures this week, saying the situation for reporters have worsened around the world. How did China fare in the assessment? Let's take a look. There has been a worldwide increase in the number of jailed journalists, according to New York-based Committee to Project Journalists, CPJ. In a report released this week, the CPJ named the worst offenders with the Chinese regime coming in at number three. The group says 32 reporters are currently in jail in China. In a recent interview with NTD, CPJ's senior Asia researcher Madeline Erb says it has become easier for Chinese authorities to target journalists. So it's not that people are writing on more contentious issues, but it's that more issues are being put in that box which is considered contentious. In its latest assessment, the CPJ says Chinese authorities extensively use anti-state laws to suppress journalists. So the fact that they are the target of these criminal charges and are being arrested uh, on suspicion of, for example, inciting subversion of state power is very concerning and should be concerning still to anyone who's, who's practicing journalism in China. While China is not the worst offender, being surpassed only by Turkey and Iran for most jailed journalists, its status as an emerging political and economic power brings obvious concerns. What you have is the impression that there's a lively civil society and that journalists are able to speak freely about the obstacles they face in their work. That's obviously not the case in China. The CPJ says writers and journalists who expose the suppression of ethnic minorities in China are at higher risk of suppression. Of the 32 journalists jailed in the country, 19 are ethnic Tibetans or Uyghurs. In its 2012, the CPJ says 232 journalists are imprisoned worldwide. That's 53 more cases compared to a year ago. And coming up after the break, China strips a Vatican-approved bishop of his title. A major charity is suspected of money laundering. And 12-12-12 is a day for 12 happy couples in Hong Kong. And welcome back. A Chinese bishop ordained by the Catholic Church has been stripped of his title by China's state-run church. Thaddeus Ma Da Ching has reportedly been under house arrest since July, according to Catholic websites. That was when the Vatican approved his ordination as Auxiliary Bishop of Shanghai, and then Ma publicly resigned from the state-run Chinese Patriotic Catholic Association. There's been long-standing conflicts between the Vatican and China's Catholic Church as to who has the right to ordain bishops. China does not recognize the Pope's authority to do so. China has around 10 million Catholic followers. Those who do not belong to state-run churches are referred to as house Christians because they often gather in private homes. Overseas advocates for China's underground Christians say they are often subject to harassment and illegal detention by authorities. A major Chinese charity is being accused of money laundering, but the Beijing-based foundation says it was only a numerical error and they did not illegally handle money totaling more than 4.5 billion yuan. Almost $800 million. That's how much a charity in China is being accused of laundering. The allegation came from online Chinese news reporter Zhou Xiaoyun in a Weibo post called 4.8 billion yuan mysteriously gone for CCAFC. That's the abbreviation for the China Charities Aid Foundation for Children. Zhou noticed that on the CCAFC's annual report for 2011, an incredible 4.84 billion yuan was listed as cash spent on other services. The charity's annual donation was listed at only 80 million yuan for the entire year. Charities are now basically linked with economic crimes. It's like a hotbed for corruption or money laundering. Otherwise, these charities would actually find it hard to operate. They're basically used by capitalist opportunists or Communist Party elites as a financial body to launder money or to transfer their assets. CCAFC, a Beijing-based public foundation, has denied the money laundering claims. After the 
online allegation. It posted statements and photos of its balance sheets. They say the problem was an error on the financial statement, a misplaced decimal, and not an issue with accounts. China has struggled with how to deal with charitable groups, amidst public mistrust of how they are operated. Last year, China's Red Cross Society became engulfed in a corruption scandal with a woman who claimed to be linked to the charity by showing off her opulent lifestyle online. And someone else is paying attention to the numbers today. The numbers and the date, that is. Today is December 12, 2012, and apparently a popular day to get married on. Here's one wedding in Hong Kong that saw 12 couples tying the knot. December 12, 2012, or 12 12 12, a day that's sure to be easy to remember. That's why today was a popular day to get married. In Hong Kong, 12 couples decided to walk down this aisle. And although couples don't normally say I do on a weekday, today's date made it exceptional. Actually, last year some of my friends got married on 11 11 11, and we thought that was really romantic. Their weddings were great, so we also wanted to get married on a good date like that. For some lovebirds, the date is more than just a cool number pattern. 1212 is like in Mandarin, it's yao ai, yao ai, yao ai. So uh, it's like, it's like, as I said, you know, it's really special and it's just a date that we both won't like, like forget. And I'll give her yao ai, I think it's been need love, so I'll give her a lot of, a lot of, a lot of love. And to cap off its significance, this wedding planner says another day like this, where the month and the date matches the year, won't happen again until the year 2101. From 8808, 9909 to 1011, every year couples put a lot of attention on these dates. But today is the last of these special dates in this century. These wedding couples joined 696 other couples who got married in Hong Kong today, above the usual average of 160. With chatter increasing over the looming end of days, a peculiar sight in Shanghai this week got people talking. On Monday, locals posted pictures of what looks like three suns in the sky. The real one in the middle is accompanied by two other clusters of light on either side of it. Observers marveled at the sight, some wondering whether it was an omen for things to come. Actually, images like these have been seen before. It's an atmospheric phenomenon called sundog. They're usually seen with a halo of light, like the one spotted here, on either side of the sun. And that's all for this broadcast of NTD China News. For more on China-related topics, visit our website at ntd.tv. Or you can subscribe to NTD's new YouTube channel, NTD on China, where you'll find all of NTD's China content. Coming up next, we have a special edition of the nine commentaries on the Communist Party. Stay tuned.